Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, some geometry here. Today we have angles and triangles, and let's talk about right angles. You know what the right angle is. It's an angle like this with 90 degrees as the angle measure. Triangles, angles, let's say you have a triangle. We know that all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So that's good information to know to find out missing angle uh, measures and so on. A right triangle looks like this. It's just a, right, it's a, a triangle that has one right angle, which means this is 90 degrees, which means that this angle plus that angle will be also 90 degrees. That doesn't mean they're both 45. It could be 30 and 60 or 80 and 10 or whatever. Uh, this side across from uh, the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, and these are both legs. You don't, it doesn't really matter what you name them, leg one and leg two. And we're gonna use that information to solve uh, sides of a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem is a theorem based on, of course, they named it after the man, the Greek man who invented it. His name was Charles Theorem. It wasn't, it was Pythagoras. Anyhow, here are a couple of examples of the Pythagorean theorem. And let me just, this is, you wanna memorize this or you wanna write it down probably, but you don't, might not have to. That is it in a nutshell. In other words, we're going to take a triangle and uh, let's say it's a right triangle. And there we'll call this side A, we'll call this side B. The hypotenuse is side C. It doesn't matter which side is A or B, as long as A or B are both legs of the right triangle. The C is always the hypotenuse. And what you'll do is you'll take the, the length of the side A and square it, then add it to the length of uh, the side B squared this will give you the length uh, of the side C squared, which you just take the square root of that, then you'll be able to find the length of side C. So, um, I could show you this big complicated drawing about how it works, but it's not that terribly important. Uh, the neat thing is you can actually draw this. If you drew a perfect right triangle with a perfectly 90 degree angle, and let's say you went and uh, you know, measured it out uh, each like the, each leg side. You would you could square each leg side, and, and actually prove that this was true uh, by taking the length then of the hypotenuse. You know, you, you could take any random, you know, I don't know, let's say it's eight inches, and you would go, oh look at this, this will be this is six inches. Let's make that a little longer there, and you could square this and square that, and you'd go, oh okay, well I'm going to see if uh, you know what I get there is the square of this side length. And you, if you did it right, you'd go, hmm, that actually does work. It's actually true. So let's do a couple of examples of this. And there's, oops, there are many more. There is a first example. This is a very famous right triangle. And they're asking us to find A. Well, again, this is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So all you need to do is just take the A and square it, which we don't know what that is. Of course, we're asking for that. B squared would be 4 times 4, which is 16. C squared would be 5 times 5, which is 25. So we know how to solve equations like this, right? Okay, so we have A squared then is equal to 25 minus 16, which is 9. And we have two possible answers here. The square, oh, excuse me, 3 or negative 3. Obviously, we have to throw out negative 3. There's no side length that is going to be negative 3. So there you go. And this is a very common triangle, a right triangle called a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And I'll show you more about that in just a minute. All right? Find side P. Can you do it? Yep, there it is. Okay, we're done with it. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. That's what they mean by find, find side P is, we're going to use again, the Pythagorean theorem. So it doesn't matter which one of these is A and which one of these is B, as long as you have this as C. You can call it P if you want to. All right, let's just say A squared, that'll be 16, plus B squared, that'll be 5 times 5, 25 is going to equal p squared. And again, it doesn't matter if this is p squared, q squared, x squared, whatever. All right, 16 plus 25 is 41. I'm just going to reverse this because I like to, like to have my variables on the left side. So p squared is 41. Well, we know the answer to that is going to be the square root of 41, which is, a, you know, somewhere between 6 and 7 integers. Okay, you can leave it like that. If you actually are building something and you, you need to buy, I don't know, if you're fencing your yard, you know, I don't know if you're babysitting a bunch of bratty homeschool kids and they're trying to get out, you know, you'll know how many, many you can, you can actually go to the calculator and figure out how many feet this is or whatever. So 
of electrified fence, of course. Okay, here's another one. Find K. Well, you might look at this and go, oh, this is terrible. This is weird looking. It's different. Yeah, it looks different, but you know, when you have something in arithmetic or it works, you have something in algebra and it works, don't change the formula. Just use it again. So if you need to each time for a couple of weeks, just write this every single time. Then you just fill in the blanks, okay? A squared, well, would that be K or five? Who cares? All we care about is making sure that C is that right there. So don't worry about it. We'll just, we'll just go first with K. So we'll say K squared plus five squared, 25, equals, well, I'm gonna, let me ask you, what is the square root of 61 times the square root of 61? It's just 61, right? Okay, that's just 61. All right, well now we have k squared is equal to 61 minus 25, well that's 36. And of course k would be the square root of 36. And there she goes, so k is six. All right, that's it, okay. All right, let's try another one. Find side n. Go ahead and pause it. You do it. Pause it. Okay, I'm assuming you've unpaused it. Let's fill in the blanks here. We've got 8 squared, that's going to be 64, plus 12 squared, that's going to be 144, equals m squared. And there we go. So I'll just go backwards here. m squared is equal to 64 plus 144. That is 208. Then in the square root of that would be that. And don't forget, you need to break this down. Don't just leave it like that. Okay. Uh, you'll need to break down 208. If you want to do it this way, feel free. 208, you know that's divisible by 2. That's a prime number. 104 is divisible by 2. Another prime number. Uh, 52, divisible by 2. 2 is a prime number. 26, you will not be surprised to learn, is divisible by 2. Okay, so there's a 13. Okay, and 13 is a prime number. So in other words, we have the square root of 208 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 13. All right, and you know how this works. The square root of 4, which was what that is, is going to be four, 2, excuse me. The square root of this 4, of course, is also going to be 2. So you have 2 times 2 on the outside, and then the square root of 13 on the inside, underneath the radical. So you'll almost certainly see the answer looking like this, 4 times the square root of 13. Okay, all right, and that's pretty much that part. Let's look at a couple of these. These are ones you're going to see a lot of times. Uh, they're common ones. This three is a 3, 4, 5. We talked about that, you know, before. Four, you know, 4 squared is 16 plus 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of that is 5. This one is very, it's kind of unusual. Um, 5 squared is 25 plus 12 squared is 144. Well, that equals 169. Well, the square root of 169 is 13. Kind of weird. This is another weird one. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. Well, that whole thing is equal to 289, which is this, you know, the square root of 289 is 17. So you don't have to memorize those necessarily. I mean, they're going to ask you questions in the book to fill in the blanks like this, which we'll do one in a second here, but um, just kind of handy to know. All right, these are called triples. This is kind of a strange thing that happens. In other words, we know that a three, four, five right triangle looks like this. I mean, that's, you know, nine plus six, uh, nine plus 16 is 25, and that works like that. The triples, you can, uh, you can do all kinds of neat things with. In other words, you would multiply them by a certain number. Let's just say you had, uh, I mean, this, you, could, you could multiply the entire thing by 10, and it would work. In other words, you take four and go, okay, I'm gonna multiply by 10, 40. 30, I'll multiply by 10, 30, and then boom. And you would get an, a true equation. 40 squared plus 30 squared is 50 squared. That would actually work. You can multiply by any number you want. Like, uh, I don't know, let's say you multiply by three or something, okay? Well, four times three is 12. Three times three is nine. Five times three is 15, and that would actually work, 12 squared, plus nine squared is 15 squared, and that would actually work. Actually, it would work on any of these. Well, let's focus more on three, four, fives, but um, which we'll do in a second here. Oops, there's an example where we have actually taken uh, the four and multiplied by two, the three multiplied by two, the 10, I mean, excuse me, five multiplied by two. In other words, 
we know that you know uh, 16 plus 9 is 25 because we squared all three. Well, 8 squared is 64. 6 squared is 34. Well, 64 plus 36 is 100. Well, that's 10 squared. Boom. There you go. That's the kind of thing that works, right? There's our last one. There's an actual picture of the one we talked about just a minute ago. So we multiplied everything by 4, and it still works. All right? Uh, there's an example for your book here. Recall the appropriate the, a triple to find the length in each of the following right triangles. Okay. Well, we kind of remember, already saw this in a few slides ago. 5 squared plus 12 squared is how many squared? Remember that? 13 squared. Okay, so the A is 13. All right? 8 squared plus what squared gives you 17 squared? That'll be 15 squared. All right? And then something squared time, uh, plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. Well, this is actually a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's been multiplied by 2. 4 has been multiplied by 2 here. 5 has been multiplied by 2 here. So 3 is going to be multiplied by 2 here. So that'll be 6, like we just did a minute ago. Okay. All right. Let's do the practice problems and try A first and go ahead and pause it. Okay, A is the square root of 61, 25 plus 36. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, B is going to be the square root of 200. You don't want to leave the square root of 200 like that because you can, you know, knock that down. It's actually 100 times 2 underneath the radical. We know the square root of 100 goes out here and becomes a 10. So, you know, the only thing left there is 10 outside, square root of 2 under. There you go. Okay, pause it and try C. Okay, C is just 5. All right, pause it and try D. All right, D is 8. That completes that. And last one, go ahead. Wait, that was the last one. Okay. <laughs> All right, see you guys next time.